test batch of maple syrup. We didn't get that much because it was pretty cold last week. We had a few really warm days and then it really cooled down, but it's warmed up again. So we think we're gonna get a lot now. So we took everything that we got a week ago, like since the past week, and we are boiling it down. I think it's only gonna end up being like a cup of maple syrup, but it's a good test batch. We have the world's tiniest bit of maple syrup, but I'm gonna make pancakes and we'll see how it tastes. It's really good. I didn't think that it was gonna be that good, but it's really sweet, but it's like a softer taste than maple syrup that I might buy at the store. Hey, it is 12 degrees outside. It's sweater weather and everything is melting at an alarming pace. We had Sheila's brush, which is what we hope is our last storm. She usually comes in March. Uh, winter is officially over and it is warming up. I just cleaned out the chicken coop and it's the end of the week. I'm gonna go check on the maple syrup because it was cold last week, but now it was really cold last night. It was like minus 10 degrees and it's like uh, plus 12 today. So that's a difference of 22 degrees Celsius, which is a big difference. So we're hoping that there's lots of maple syrup flowing. So I'm gonna go check it out. It's still pretty deep there. It's still really deep in the snow, but it's pretty hard and it's melting really, really quickly underneath. So hopefully in a month, it'll be gone. All right, so as you saw earlier, we had our maple syrup from last week. And a lot of people, if they don't deep freeze it and do it all, process it all at once, they'll kind of um, process it every seven days because it will go bad. And, oh, I think there's kind of a lot. I haven't been checking every day, Dominic has, but here. We're just kind of learning uh, as we're going, but we've got two of the buckets that have a decent amount of sap coming into them, and these two are essentially empty. But I'm gonna check the other buckets. I don't really know why some are getting sap and some are not. Is it just like luck of the draw? Or is there a uh, technique to it? Because I don't know, they look the same. I guess some of them are a little bit smaller than the other ones. I think the bigger ones are making sap, if I had to guess. So if my theory that the larger diameter tree has more sap, these ones will have sap in them. I was wrong. I don't know. Two of the trees are consistently getting sap and I'm gonna check the one down here and see how that is. So all those trees are actually going next year. So sadly, like that really big one that's really beautiful and is giving us sap, it's just, it's just not in a good place. So it's gotta go. But let's check out this tree. Not a lot. That's where Dominic was burying the bucket that he was collecting the sap in. The sun hit those trees. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. I guess I have to like research it. Or maybe if you know, you could tell me all you know about maple, maple syrup tapping. I should probably go to the library and get out a book. That's what I should do. It's Monday afternoon after work. It is so warm outside. The snow is melting very rapidly. I didn't think that it would melt this quickly, but we got 30 centimeters on the last week. And I was like, we're gonna see this snow for a month, but it's going so fast. Here comes Jeannie. Come here, baby. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy. <laughs> Hi, baby. Come here. So we have a couple chores to do, and we're gonna get started with the week. Mommy, I'm gonna I was 
going to get away with uh, no snowshoes, but I'm not. <laughs> My shoes are filled with ice, so I got to get the snowshoes on. I think Dominic hid the bucket near this tree. So we had to dig it out and empty all of the buckets. And there's nothing in this tree. So there's like a hot breeze. It's probably, it feels like it's 12, 15 degrees. And then when the sun comes through the, well, when like the wind comes through the trees, you get like this really warm breeze. If there was no snow, like even now, like I'm in a sweater and I'm kind of sweating. It's so nice out. Um, I said I grew up in Cape Breton, but I grew up like really close to the ocean in New Waterford. Um, like you've seen my parents' house, that's where I grew up. and like you just don't get it's it's warmer here than it is there like i was saying to jen today that i thought that the snow was going to stay for a really long time because it's generally a little bit cooler at my parents house but here it's like it is just taking it cutting and it's going to be gone really soon so i got the maple syrup done i collected the eggs i'm gonna make supper and i'm gonna start the seeds if not tonight then tomorrow night but anyway that's my next task It's six o'clock. I'm having a cup of coffee because I have so many things that I want to do, but I am very tired and I keep going to bed. So I'm drinking my coffee at six o'clock because I'm gonna stay up and I'm gonna get lots of stuff done. First things first, I don't know if you guys remember if you watched that video where I made the spreadsheet with the dates that I was going to start my seeds and it said March 17th. It is now March 25th and I have not done it yet. So today I'm going to start my seeds. I don't think it's gonna be that hard. Um, I have this. So these are pea pellets and it says, expand Jiffy 7 pea pellets by gradually adding approximately 1 8 a cup of warm water, warm water per pellet or approximately 10 and a half cups, two and a half liters to expand the entire package. Add more water as needed. When pellets are fully expanded about one and a half inches, um, pour off any excess water. So I'm gonna get some water to say it's warm. Yeah, warm water. I'm gonna need about two and a half liters of warm water that I'm going to pour onto the pellets and they are all going to expand. And it's going to be perfect. So let's do that. Okay, next step. Because I did not read through the instructions in their entirety before I started, because that is not how I work. Gently pull back the netting on top of the pellets. Fluff and level surface peat. So two to three seeds per pellet. Oh. Cover lightly with peat, place dome entree and keep in a warm location away from direct sunlight. I can do that. I have got, um, I don't remember, bell peppers, cherry tomatoes. I did something weird here and I can't exactly remember what I planted. And you now the signs are getting wet and all of the ink is going. So I think Spanish onions, bunching onions, broccoli, salsa peppers. Okay, so stormy all day today. Not very nice out there. My nice clean uh, barn window here. Uh, it's not fit outside, so we had this box of scraps left over from uh, building the bed there last week. So I'm going to make a little chicken box, nesting box out of it. I think I'm gonna try to. Um, the one we have is like an old coke crate, which is kind of cool, but uh, 
I'm going to build a one that's a little bit smaller, because I think that one's a bit too wide. One that's a little bit smaller, with a bigger lip on the front, because right now the chickens are scratching out the bedding out of it, every single day almost. So, I feel if I put a thicker lip on it, they'll just be able to crawl in and crawl out. And we'll get less broken eggs that way. So, I'm going to do some figuring here now, and how hard can it be to make a cube? One open side, right? I guess we'll find out. All right. There it is, the free scrap wood chicken box. A little overkill with the 2x8 two by, uh, on the top properly, but but uh, I mean, it's scrap wood. It's the only scrap wood I had there that could fit it really, so. The lip is a good height, I think. I think that's lots of room for them to get in, for me to put in some straw, and then They'll not be able to kick it out too easy. Actually, I think this is this is hay, as a matter of fact. And I think that might be a part of the problem we're having, is that there's a lot of seed head in this. So the birds are, I think, the eggs, they go in and lay their eggs, and then they come out and then they're in pecking at the seeds, and I think they, they hit some. You know what, this one is going to be a lot better, I think. Because when we want to clean out the coop, we can take the whole thing out and clean around it. Unlike having that piece of 2x4 there, that's not so great, right? So, I think that might end up being a, a net positive. But the only thing we got to worry about now is trying to uh, keep the birds off the top. But. I'll figure something out for that hang string or something there. But, whatever. Free nesting box, hopefully more effective than the last one at keeping the, uh, keeping the eggs in there. Yep. We just wrapped the brisket. The brisket's been in about five hours. Another four hours maybe and it's done, or then two hours and four. That's pork belly and three pork roasts. All in one smoke. The bark seems like it got soggy and came off, maybe. Or maybe there was too much rub, I don't know. Sunday night and there's a lot going on in the kitchen right now. We are, oh, <laughs> I just realized I put bread in a few minutes ago. I don't know how long ago, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. There's bread in the oven. I don't know when it's finished or when it was in there, but it's in there. Um, so we have got bread in the oven. We have maple sap cooking on the stove. And I am bagging up some meat that Dominic smoked today. He had the smoker on and he smoked a brisket, pork shoulder, two pork smaller somethings, not sure, and um, some pork belly. So I am bagging it all up. We're gonna put it in the freezer so we have so much meat, which is awesome. And yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is the brisket that Dominic made. So we cook it, we let it cool, and then we put it in the freezer, and then whenever we want to whenever we want to actually have it, we'll actually take this bag unopened and put it into a pot of water and boil it, and it's actually deadly. It's so tasty like that. So I'll show that to you sometime this week probably. Okay, clearly I am editing and I'm trying to wrap it up, but uh 
So that is it for this week. And I wanna show you guys the seeds before we head off. So I wrote it on the little cards and all the ink washed away. Um, <laughs> apparently if you use uh, blinds, they're really good for markers. And I have like broken blinds down in the basement, so I should have used those. And now I know. Um, but I think I know what everything is. I think that the really big ones are broccoli, and I think that, um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. There's onions and bell peppers, and there's stuff in there. I think the tall ones are broccoli. Anyway, they're growing. I'm super happy. I'm going to put that in a south-facing window um, on our kitchen table for now, and kind of figure out whether or not we're going to do like a full light setup. We do have lights downstairs, but I don't know if there's enough. And because of... Like I'm not really starting that many seeds. A lot of them I'm gonna grow in this in the ground. I, I got a lot of cold hardy seeds. So that's our first year. So we'll just figure it out as we go. Anyway, that is it for this week. And we have big news for next week. So it's very exciting and we'll see you on Sunday. Bye. Sixteen. Sixteen. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, good counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eleven, ten, sixteen. 11, 18, 11, 18, 11, 10, 17, 18, 16, 11, 10, 16, 11, 10, 18, 8, 9, 10.